Yes. Well, Darnell uh, prayed and fasted every Friday for a year for the suffering church behind the Iron Curtain. And then she met some Romanians after a year. And they began to tell us about the conditions of that country. And it became apparent almost immediately, we got to do something. And I was told that though they were cold and hungry and in need of all kinds of materials, if you took food and clothes and medicine and Bibles, they would leave the food and clothes and medicine alone so they'd have more room to take Bibles. And I thought people that hungry for God's Word need to have God's Word taken to them. Yes, and when I said uh, one of the things that I remember feeling so strongly is the determination, it seemed like an impossible task. Impossible. You've got a border with all of the tools at a government's disposal trying to stop you from doing the very thing we were there to do. Right. Well, imagine you're uh, in San Diego okay. and you're driving across the border into Mexico Right. and you have 1,600 pounds of drugs. That's what it felt like approaching a communist border with 1,600 Bibles hidden in secret compartments. Mm -hmm. So the border kind of looked like going through... The Mexico. border had guard towers, German Shepherd dogs, guards with machine guns, minefields on each side of the road. It was a daunting task. Uh, a that friend of know. mine... Uh, got caught trying to escape Romania and she was actually put in the very prison I was would have been put in if I would have been caught on the border of Timisoara uh -huh. and she said the, the cell you could reach out and touch both walls so it was that narrow this is it oh this is many, where I'm gonna get many caught. stories tell me one at one point I was at a border crossing they always had three people that would tear your vehicle apart looking for any type of contraband. There was always two people tearing your vehicle apart and the third person just watched you watch them. Mm -hmm. And at one point, two, the two guards uh, tearing apart my vehicle, they had the secret compartment partially opened. When was the first time that you knew I'm doing God's absolute work? Like, it doesn't matter if I do get caught. When I approached the first border, it actually wasn't the Romanian border. I crossed from uh, from Holland through West Germany, and I came to the Czechoslovakian border. And when I saw my first border crossing, and the guard towers, and the minefields, and all of this, and I realized all of this is here to stop people from doing the very thing I'm here to do, I had to make a decision. And at that moment, if you aren't absolutely certain God's called you to do it, you will turn that vehicle around and go back. Right. And so that was the, the tipping point for me. That was the moment of truth. Did God call me to do this or not? And at that moment, I made the decision that God did call me to do it. And uh, that's the first time I penetrated the Iron Curtain. You definitely have to have a call from God to do it and the people that you're trying to serve are in greater danger than you are trying to serve them. Mm. Um, and so it's not for the faint of heart, but it's not for the Rambos either. Well, every time you, you crossed into the, the Soviet bloc and every time you left was a very happy time right. because both were, were moments of success. But I remember handing a woman a Bible who began to cry and she said she had prayed for a Bible for 40 years. I can remember seeing people that I'd been there that I'd met on earlier trips and it had been six months since I'd been there and, and go back and to see them again and to have that those moments kind of rekindled. I can remember moments, I call them holy moments, where I would speak with a pastor of an underground church that was risking his own freedom just to do what I do freely here. And we would speak through an interpreter and we couldn't even speak the same language, but there was a bond because we were Christians. I can remember the first time that, uh, that I went into Romania and uh, they were very suspicious of me. They didn't know I was coming because you couldn't communicate back then. And the first thing they said is, you are a Christian? 
And I said, yes. They said, you are brother in Christ? And I said, yes. And I literally saw them sigh a sigh of relief and, and said, we are, we are believers also. We can talk.